ICP analysis, lots of companies doing it. Flooded market perhaps, but I'm here with Claude from Fauna Marin. You say your ICP test is totally different. Tell me why. How we manage it is based on aquarium. So we, we don't use any theoretical parameters or references. So we take it from the coral farming out okay. and see and have the direct access to the corals to see what they need in the aquarium, not outside in the reef. But if I look at other ICPs, they say here's the water in Fiji or here's the water in the Red Sea. Your water is based off the aquarium water. Yeah. Because that's we, where we're growing stuff. We are, in, we are in South Germany, so the next sea is a little bit far away. <laughs> so nobody keeps it on, sea, on northern sea water or Hawaii water, whatever. Okay. So we base all what we do based on artificial sea water. So that's why we train the machines and also the parameters which we use. And you were saying your software is what part of what makes a difference as well. It's smarter and it can predict what should be going on in my tank. The software, what we use, is in different levels. So the first is when you get when, when you make your ICP test, you get a PDF with the numbers. And very simple, like you know it, it's starting from the salinity, so the most important, and goes down till to unwanted elements. And then. The second step is that you get on the software uh, explanation what it means, everything, and you get exactly detailed, they tell you what is to do, if it's too high or if it's too low. Okay. It's not only a sign up and down, or it does this, you know, where it comes from, what is the reason you get it, what happens, because you have some elements which causes nothing, which they're a little bit too high, okay. and some can could be dangerous, like aluminium, for example. The people are getting nervous by aluminium. So long you work with zeolites, or you have a food where a bentonite inside, you have an ICP high aluminium, but it causes nothing because it's, it's a small particles which causes no issues like zeolites. And zeolites are aluminium silicates, and that's why the element analysis shows high aluminium. Okay. So, and this software explains if you use that one, you can have high, but it does not matter. Okay. So, the third step is the knowledge base. It's, we have every element we write down what it causes, where it comes from, and what is the benefit for the corals, and more important, what is the benefit for the biology of the roof tank. We were talking about how once I send in five tests, then I have a standard that I can be measured against, and your software can predict where things should be. Yes, this is the RE base, then later. So if you, have an, if you make five tests, we can look back on the test and the trends, and give a prognosis, a forecast, what happens in the reef tank in the future. So this is always stepping by layers. So it's one step by the next. If you have the five tests, then we could we look backwards as the software do automatically and now you send your six tests in. Now we know what we can expect in your aquarium. If okay. if there's no inspection there, let me say your your council raises up miles high, then the software automatically go back to the machine, say please test it again. And maybe we have a particle inside. Right. Maybe you make a mistake by taking, so that's a small piece of food inside, whatever, can happen. Right. So then it tests again. If it's again, then it goes to a, to a screen, to my workers and, and to the ladies in, in our lab and shows red or yellow. And then we can talk or we can write an email or we can check the machine if this is okay or not. After that, she gives free out. If it's okay, because this happens sometimes. Yeah. Uh, but it prevents the system, because actually we do about 200, 300 tests a day, and it prevents it prevents from mistakes. Yeah. And we have to do it automatically. So the system checks your parameters. Yeah. On the second layer, it checks to all others this day. How was to change it during the testing okay. against the standards? So your test is not only test one time, it's test three times and against all standards. And after okay. that we can recalculate and we can say, okay, this is now a parameter which we can give up. Now we have this test here, you have an ICP total test. What's the difference between this well, test we, and this test? We have two tests. Um, for us, what's important the customers can have for a low price, a very fast test. Because when you need parameters, you need it fast as yeah. possible. So, uh, for that reason, we ship three times a week to Germany, and within 24 hours, usually we can get the results then to the software. These fast ICP, the reef ICP test here, has 38 parameters, the most important, but only ICP machine. 
So there's no salinity or alkalinity, it's the elements. And all these tests, meanwhile, they have, uh, don't forget to register the lab, yeah. it's important. Yeah, because you know, European data protection, we don't have names. We only work with the number. Our members, our workers don't have names. So if you call us and say, hey, I'm Mark, where's my, where's my sample? I say, sorry, <laughs> I had no idea, where's your number? So every of these tests containing a filter so that we remove bacteria and particles as good as possible. You say there's a filter to filter out the bacteria. No other ICP test I've ever used has that. Yeah, no. How can that throw off test values? If you add a bacteria solution in the morning, and after two hours, you, oh, I have to make my ICP test. You take it, you will, you will have in your test high high level. Yeah. Because you still have some bacteria in and they will be detected. Okay. So, in this case, the phosphate raises up. This has not something to do. If, if, you, use, if you use the cream on your hands, yeah. if you a few hours before, then you have high sink in, in the parameter. If my work is using sink, you can find it in the machines because they're so sensitive. Meanwhile, that is completely forbidden. They have no no creams, nothing. Yeah. Come on. And the ladies, you know, they really like it when I say no screen, nothing. And come on, yeah. say, yes, but the machine, uh, they hate, but they have to do. Yeah. And that's why we use um, food particles. We have a total test. Yes. What's the difference here? The total test is a little bit higher, so we have a RO test, you can give your RO water, we test automatically. We have uh, nitrate, three different types of phosphate, alkalinity, salinity, really we go on pH, on CO2, whatever. Wow. So we have 98 different parameters and relations. PH. It shows you for SPS, keep a note that. If you have uh, low nutrients and too high alkalinity, your Tino is close away. So it has nothing to do with bacteria or something else. Mm. Tinus is a bitch, so you have to keep stable. Right. There you can see the relations which are important for the color of the tank for SPS stuff. For anemone of some fish it's not so that important. Okay. And I say usually this one for fast if you have calcium, potassium, iodine, all the things. And all three times or four times you use the bigger. All right, sounds like I need to do some testing then on my tank. Get my Try it out. Let's make sure. So it's available. All right, I'll do it. And the big sets now, it's five and one for free. So for that. Uh, and I needed five to get that trend, so. Yes, I, mean, I, I need five for that. <laughs> All right, we'll go do it.